pleased to have back here on the Rich Eisen Show, John Barry. How are you, John? What's up, Rich? Just signing some memorabilia, getting getting ready to leave for Cleveland. Are you now when you're signing memorabilia? Are you asking for something that looks game used, or yeah, are you rub a little rub a little dirt on it? Okay. Yeah. Now, sweat in a little bit. But in, in all seriousness, uh, you know, you're making a reference to to the Eli Manning stuff that we're going to hit later on uh, on our show. When, as an athlete, when you when you hear about this, do you is this something that sounds normal to you, or could be viewed in a way other than the way people are viewing it for Eli? Or what do you think, John? Yeah, I, I think it's really not that big a deal, to be quite honest. And there's so much fake stuff out there. We had sports bars here in Atlanta that had. I, I'd be in there with guys, and they'd look up and see a jersey that was theirs, and so he'd, they'd be like, "No, there's no way in the world I signed that. I know that's not my signature." Mm -hmm. But so at least Eli's signing it. So who cares if it's born in the game or not? Mm -hmm. John Barry, no problem. With that. Okay, John Barry here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. Let's let's touch on this uh, Cavs Indiana series. You think Cavs are going to flip a switch? What do you think, John? Yeah, I think they're going to be fine. Uh, obviously, ten and fourteen after the break is. Uh, a little bit concerning, uh, but you know, I think Ty Lue has a, lo a lot of lineups that he didn't really go to. He's got uh, a lot of weapons at his disposal now with the additions uh, that they've made. So uh, I, I think they will. LeBron was playing great despite the record. Uh, Kyrie was a little banged up. Love missed time. J.R. Smith had come back. Shumpert missed time. So uh, I think they're all healthy, and uh, you, you do have a different mentality. You know, once that last regular season game is over great focus i'm sure in practice yesterday uh same with today and, and i fully expect them to be ready to go tomorrow well how difficult is it to flip the switch have you ever been on a team that needed to do that john well you know it, it's it, going into the playoffs I, I don't know if there's a recipe that is better than another you know you know winning seven or eight in a row uh losing six of seven going into the playoffs i i, I don't think it matters it, it really when that last regular season game is over it's a completely different mentality. You forget about what happened. Those games were meaningless. Uh, maybe they were important to get in the playoffs at that point, but at the end of the day, the regular season is over, and this is a completely different animal. And uh, So I, I don't believe in momentum going in. I know what the Warriors won, 14 to 15, whatever it is. If they had lost some games, I, I don't think it has an effect either way. Well, unless they got to get on a plane to play game seven for the right to go to the NBA Finals, right, John? I mean, that that's... The that's the head scratcher here is don't you want to get every possible advantage in your column before going into the playoffs, even if it does run the risk that you run your guys down uh, prior to a first round series that you should wrap up in such a way that you could be getting your rest in between rounds one and two. That's the head scratcher to me about way, the way the Cavs played the last week of the season. Yeah, uh, you know, you should put some importance of being the number one seed. I mean, uh, if it does get down to that game seven, you're going to be going to Boston in the Eastern Conference final, provided the fact that they get there. Uh, but, yeah, that, that is, it was dis uh, disconcerting the way they played. I mean, particularly on the defensive end, uh, their numbers were, were at the bottom of the league since the All-Star break. They haven't been good really all year. Uh, and there was no sense of urgency. Um so maybe, maybe it will have an effect. Obviously, we're not going to find out that tomorrow. Uh, listen to LeBron James. He feels awfully confident. Uh, they do have the pieces, and if they're healthy, I, I still think they find a way to turn this thing around, and uh, they're they're going to represent the Eastern Conference in the finals. So what are the what are the Pacers saying in their locker room right now, going about their business here? Well, they they're one and three against Cleveland on the year. The only one game that they won was early, and LeBron did not play in that game. Uh, they had a great double overtime game a couple weeks ago uh, that Paul George had 43 in that game. Uh, LeBron had a monster triple-double. Uh, so I, I believe there's some confidence. You know, Indiana's won five straight. It uh, looked like they were pretty much going to be out of the playoffs uh, 10 days ago, and uh, they made a nice run. Paul George is playing great basketball. He's a, a franchise-type player that can win single-handedly win games for you. So I, I think there's some confidence there. But, uh, you know, to beat Cleveland four times, uh, you've got you got to be almost perfect, and uh, Indiana is going to have their hands full. And then that kicks off the uh, quadruple header of games uh, on Saturday that culminates with Utah and the Clippers here in Los Angeles. That's a, a four or five series. Not many people are talking about for I guess a couple of reasons. Um, the the top one being um, you know 
that whoever wins that one takes on Durant and the Warriors, the now super team Warriors in the second round. And also just because the Clippers have just not been able to put things together with the big three. How do you see that series playing out? Uh, I, I like the Clippers in the series. Uh, they've really owned the matchup against Utah of late. I think they've won 18 of 20, something like that. Uh, they're playing really good basketball. I had them in San Antonio about uh, a week ago. Uh, they look really good. The starters are playing fantastic. Their their bench is coming around. Austin Rivers, don't know his availability, might not be around for the first round. Uh, but again, this is a huge, huge year for this Clipper team. You've got three free agents in Paul, Reddick, and Griffin. And uh, they haven't been to the, to the conference final. And uh, you mentioned the Golden State Warriors in the second round. And boy, uh, the Warriors have treated them like the Washington Generals uh, the last time, uh, about nine, ten times that they played. They've owned the uh, the Clippers. So uh, they're going to have their hands full, and they're going to have a lot of questions uh, this summer if they don't get through that second round. Yeah, it seems like the Clippers have the Spurs number, don't they, John? They do play the Spurs well, yeah. Uh, they... It's a better matchup, but uh, unfortunately for them, they're in the four spot. Uh, they're going <laughs> to get right. the Warriors in the second round. And uh, wh- what do you think are the chances that Westbrook could triple-double the uh, Thunder's way past a resurgent Harden Rockets combination in that three, six uh, series. John. Yeah. I, I don't really see that happening. I, I think they can maybe get a couple games just because uh, his heroics. Uh, but in the end, uh, the team's just not strong enough around him. I mean, Russell has been sensational, maybe an MVP, uh, but I, I don't think that they can beat this Houston team four times. Now, are you saying maybe because you, you, you've you heard the back-and-forth national discussion about Harden and Westbrook, or you think that Harden is the MVP of the season? Uh, well, I had to put my vote in, and okay. I voted for Russell Westbrook. Uh, it was a very difficult decision, and I think it's going to be split. Uh, you know, it's going to be a very close race, uh, but both of them certainly deserving. And uh, we'll see how it shakes out. So then but, uh, why'd, you, you know, why'd you hand in why? for, for number zero then? Well, we haven't seen somebody average a triple-double in 57 years, and it's only the second time that it's ever been done. And uh, I, I don't know, just how hard this guy plays, uh, I think he's he's just been incredible this year to be able to average those kind of numbers uh, and his team still be, what, 46, 47 wins. Uh, I think it was an MVP season. He's just he's remarkable this year. Now, uh, last one for you, John. Uh, are the Cavs going to arrest anybody? Maybe game one? <laughs> yeah. What do you think? Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I think Johnny Menzel might suit up for him. Oh, or, boy. Or RG3. No, that would wow. be great. That would be huge, John. That would be new. That'd be that, big. That, well, I mean, no, seriously. Let, let's 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 rest a couple of the big three um, <laughs> to get them ready for the long the long haul, right? Let's just oh, yeah. I, I think look Indiana past. wouldn't. Yeah, they, they'd really respect that decision. Let's look down the road. I mean, just in case. Just keep. That would be great. Just Just keep resting players all the way to the end. And see I'm how that goes. You, the resting has got. I hope it's addressed by Adam Silver this summer. It's uh, it's getting to be a real problem around the league. I'm, I'm uh, these guys need to play. Getting paid a lot of money. The game's on the schedule. Lace them up and go. Well, what's to how, how? Where's the fix? I mean, I we. I know. You know, I know that they've know. decided to maybe extend the season so there's more games. Um, guys, which which guest did we have that suggested maybe? Uh, a, an extra break during the first two rounds of March Madness. I forget who came on our show and su- and suggested that Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Nobody's Ooh. really watching the NBA anyway. That was a that was a good was one. It, Just, was it Van Gundy? It was, maybe you know, it was Van Gundy. Did that? Yeah, Van Gundy said that. You know, just throw that out there too. Well, I mean, you already get an extra four or five days at the All Star break. It used to be maybe three, four days. Now it's a week. Uh, I mean, the nutritionists that they have, they've got masseuses, they fly, you know, privately. What, I mean, like, come on, what, what, what more do we need? Well, the one that really got me was the Brooklyn Nets. 61 yeah. losses, and they didn't, even, <laughs> they didn't even put Lynn and Lopez on a plane to play a game that the Heat and the rest of the league needs to have competitive because there was an actual playoff spot on the line against yeah, the Bulls. They, yeah, they played in Chicago uh, and didn't bring those guys. I think there was... Uh, a second round pick was possibly available to them had they lost another game. Someone told me, I, I don't know why, but yeah, I mean, the whole wrestling thing just drives me crazy. It's just, uh, it's not fair to the fans too. You know, I get it from a coach's standpoint. Uh, and what about the spirit of competition? Like you said, 
the Indiana Pacers played the Atlanta Hawks. They didn't play their top six guys. Miami needed to win to get in, and they needed Indiana to lose. And Atlanta handed Indiana a win. So they had no chance. Well, I guess with Atlanta and Milwaukee, you know, uh, had half their team in Boston. Um, but they're, they're, they're in the playoffs. So that one I can kind of understand. A Nets team, it's like, look, you lost 61 games. You were dreadful all year. How about you suit everybody up and let's give us one good game and see what you could do, right? Just a little bit no, of pride also that you stick it to another team to show that we're just – where's a sense of professionalism and pride? That one really got me. That yeah, one got no, me. Why not, why not go in there and try to beat Chicago and keep them out of the playoffs? I mean, they give you something, something to feel good about after yeah. you lost 51 games. Have a good broadcast. Uh, we'll chat with you throughout the playoffs. Love having you on, John. Okay, Rich. Good you to got, talk to you. Got it. That's John Barry. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.